Welcome back to the EG Reading Rounds. I'll start with Chapter 9 today. So the first question, select right hemispheric seizure. Let's enlarge each of these images and then we'll discuss the different characteristic and EG findings and then pick up the right answer. So let's start with this one. So as you see here, the odd numbers record electrical activity from the left side of the brain. The even numbers record electrical activity from the right side of the brain and CZ, FZ, CZ and PZ record electrical activity from the midline. What you see here, these dark green lines are separated by one second. Now do you see a seizure on the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere? What you basically see here are these sharp waves. So number of sharp waves that you see in the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. There is no evolution in frequency or amplitudes of these discharges. The epileptiform discharges obviously tell you that these, uh, this person is at a high risk of having ongoing seizures. There are areas of excitability on the brain, but there is no evolving pattern here. There is no evolution in frequency and amplitude, so you will not regard this as uh, a seizure. Syndrome where you see this is uh, patients with Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, so you see generalized slowing. So between two lines, you see frequencies of one, two, three, four, five, so which is theta frequency. Then you see a very slow wave here. So this is delta frequency. So you see background slowing in delta and theta frequencies and sharp waves that are seen in both hemispheres. So this EEG does not show a, show an electrographic seizure. Let's move on. What about this one? Now I have compressed the EEG, so the dark green lines are still represent one second each. I've compressed it so that you can see the period of evolution. So the odd numbers here record electrical activity from the left side and the even numbers from the right side. What you see here is this frequency that evolves in frequency and amplitude. So you see the frequency here is different than the frequency here. Here it gets very slow, delta frequency. Look at the amplitude here and compare with the amplitude later on. So you see that there is an evolution in amplitude. So the amplitude was lower at the beginning and it has gone higher. There is a clear beginning here. So if you see there is no, you don't see a paroxysmal discharge at this point in EEG, but then there is a clear beginning here. So there are a number of characteristics which define an electrographic seizure. Number one, you need to see an evolution in frequency, which we see here. You need to see an evolution in amplitude, which you see when comparing this part to this part. You want to see a clear beginning, which you see right here, and you want to see a clear end, which you don't see in this EG because it is only a 30 second segment. If I had kept a few more pages, you would have seen uh, the end of the seizure. Uh, what about this? Could this be a seizure? Well, it is not. You see a paroxysmal discharge with sharp activity in the occipital head region, basically at the at P3 O1 channel. So the maximal negativity, in fact, is at O1. So you don't see a seizure. There is no f evolution in frequency or amplitude. And what about this one? You see sharp waves, so these are maximal in the frontal head region. You see sort of a spike and wave discharge, but you do not see an evolution in frequency. If you had seen the similar spike and wave that had persisted, let's say over 10 seconds, with changes in amplitude and frequency, this would have constituted uh, an electrographic seizure. In children with absence seizures, you may not see a whole lot of variation, so it is the duration of spike and wave sometimes that uh, basically speaks whether this person has an electrographic seizure or not. So this is not a seizure, uh, but this is epileptiform discharge, meaning that this person is at a high risk for seizures, most likely generalized epilepsy. So the answer, select right hemispheric seizure. So what I'll mark here is here and this is the right answer and we'll move on to the next slide. So select occipital sharp waves. Let's start with this one. So what is the state of this patient? When you look at the EEG, the first question you should ask yourself is, is this person awake or asleep? What you see clearly is are these discharges here 
or these high frequency uh, waves in the central head region, frontal central head region. So this is, these are sleep spindles. And when you see sleep spindles, these are defining features of stage 2 sleep. So this EEG is being recorded from stage 2 sleep. What you see here, these sharply contoured waves, these are posts. So positive occipital sharp transients of sleep, which is a benign variant. So these are not occipital sharp waves and should not be confused with occipital spikes. Okay, what about this one here? So this in this box, so first, what's the state of the patient? You do not see an occipital dominant alpha rhythm. Uh, you start seeing some sleep spindles here, so this is possibly stage 2 sleep. But what you see here, these things, these are called small sharp spikes, which is a benign variant and does not constitute a higher risk for epilepsy. What about here? So you see a very fast frequency here. This is out of sleep followed by some slow spike in wave discharges uh, to maybe 1.5 to 2 hertz spike in wave discharge at a slow frequency and this is the fast activity. This is called paroxysmal fast activity and something that you see in patients with lennox gesto syndrome. So in patients with lennox gesto syndrome during sleep you may see paroxysmal fast activity. And that's, let's move on to this one. What do you see here? So this is an EEG which is slow. So you're looking at the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. There are sharp waves with maximal amplitude in the occipital region. So both O1 and O2, you see these sharp waves here. So these are occipital sharp waves. And this EEG suggests that this person has a high risk of seizure onset from the occipital head regions bilaterally. So the correct answer, select occipital sharp waves. This is the correct answer and we've gotten it right. So the third uh, slide, third question, select Otahara syndrome. Otahara syndrome is an epileptic encephalopathy and one of the hallmarks of the EEG is this burst suppression pattern. So here you see period, uh, this is a burst which lasts for approximately four seconds followed by a period of suppression that is three, four, five seconds. So if you see burst suppression pattern, you can see it in epileptic encephalopathy such as Otahara syndrome, but you can also see burst suppression pattern in any age group if someone has suffered a severe anoxic brain injury. Burst suppression pattern can also be chemically induced by propofol, by pentobarbital and several anesthetic drugs. Okay, I'll show you one more EEG and then we'll stop here and I'll see you at, uh, at another time. So this EEG pattern, what you see here is almost 3 per second spike in wave. This is a pattern that is seen in patients with generalized epilepsies such as absence seizures. So I'll stop here and we'll have another discussion maybe in a few weeks. Thank you for your attention.